Hello, Nick Narcon here again, the Gara Automotive. Um, it's been a bit snowy today, so I don't think I'm going to have any customers into the workshop. So I thought I might take this opportunity to do a little walk around the uh, MG Midget and point out a few things that uh, perhaps uh, you haven't seen before in other videos. I apologise for the humming noise in the background. That's a heater and uh, it's a bit chilly in here at the moment, so I'm not inclined to turn it off at the moment. See you in a minute. One of the first things that strikes people about this car is the colour. It's a sort of love it or hate it colour. In some lights it looks very green, in other lights it looks very grey. I, I love it. It's a 1950s colour, BMC colour, and uh, it's in cellulose. I've used the original windscreen uh, because it's easy to replace uh, should it get broken. I've made my own windscreen frame in steel. The reason I've done that is that I wanted to make sure I could weld in uh, rollover protection and a framework for the new bodywork. The other parts that I've had to make in steel have been the door frames. The door frames were quite difficult to make because they curve in a couple of directions. Uh, they had to have the channel for the glass to slide into and for the Furflex uh, glass seal to sit. And the reason I put frames on, on the doors was so that I could run a sealing rubber around the door aperture and get a good seal all the way around. Now, if you look closely, You'll notice that the door has got quite a um, lip along here and so there's a right angle then it goes into the glass and then up. Now the ceiling rubber needs a much smoother line to follow so it follows along here and goes all the way up around the frame and then down the side. And I've made a kind of a fillet at the front to um, take up that slope. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. So here you see the door seal and it goes all the way around the door aperture on a flange. And the flange is also made in steel and it sits in behind the fiberglass top. Now I'll show you where the fiberglass top begins and ends. The windscreen frame is steel all the way around here and down into the steel A pillar which has got a thick steel tube inside it. The steel also continues underneath the fiberglass along here and all the way down the B pillar. The fiberglass top starts just about here and it continues all the way here. This is a fiberglass covering over the steel. And the fiberglass continues down to about this point here where it's bonded onto the original steel about along this line. If I'm going to make more of these, I think I might make a new mould and take the fibreglass all the way down to the bottom of the car so that I don't have this uh, bonded joint along here. The reason I made the prototype with this uh, joint here is simply just to cut down on the amount of fibreglass I was going to use because it's done on such a tight budget and also to retain um, the uh, original shape 
um, of the rear wheel arch. Now a lot of people much prefer the round wheel arch to the square wheel arch but I actually like the square wheel arch and I think it suits this car very well. Now the square wheel arch um, at the rear of course it isn't actually square but of course it's called the square wheel arch to differentiate it from the round wheel arch um, it's actually a very very nice elegant shape it has a that beautiful 50s uh, look to it um, which I absolutely love and as we come up here um, we can see the wing line which is very very different from the original wing line on the convertible now that will be accentuated by the rear bumper which rather like an E-type Jaguar um, wraps all the way around uh, and it's a very very slim from the tail light through to um, the rear of the, the, the wheel arch. Now I haven't actually made the bumper itself but I have made a mock-up and um, on some pictures of the car that I did earlier the, mo the, the wooden mock-up is, is on there. So again, talking about the fiberglass top, it comes all the way down here, right to the back. It ends on this line here, and then it's bonded onto the steel round about here. The rear lamps are the original rear lamps, but there's a completely different angle although they look very very similar to the original in fact if you'll see here they're now in line with that wing line that goes straight through on the convertible the wing line is angled quite considerably so without the change of angle of the rear lights they would look as if they're on sort of crooked getting that right actually took ages um, now you would have thought that it was really quite a simple thing to do but uh, just a few degrees out one way or the other and that wing line just didn't look right at all. We've got a reversing light here on the left hand side and a fog light on the right hand side. Now you can see there the old uh, bumper mounts for the rubber bumper for the 1500 um, I've left those holes there for the moment because I've got to make mounts for the new bumper. The new bumper runs underneath where the edge of the fiberglass top comes down and runs sort of behind and flush with the rear number plate lamp. This is a stainless steel uh, exhaust silencer uh, made by the same people who make them for Morgan. Um, I had that uh, made especially. I did have a, a cheap and cheerful sports silencer on there, but it was so loud, um, I didn't like it at all. And the manufacturers of this particular uh, silencer, they made it uh, to fit this car specifically. Um, and uh, it flows very well, uh, but it's not as loud as a regular sports exhaust. Um, I, I don't like a really loud exhaust. I, I think the tone is important, but not the volume. I've utilized the um, original boot lock, but it's set much lower uh, than the original because I wanted a nice gap between the lock and the start of the hatchback. But it operates in exactly the same way, locks in the same way, opens in the same way. The rear screen is made of plexiglass or perspex. It's the same stuff, perspex being a trade name of course. Um, I think plexiglass is a trade name too, but it's the same stuff. And um, the rubber seal is a standard rubber seal. There's nothing special about that. And I thought I might have to put that in the oven to bend it, but in actual fact, it bent to that shape without any heating. The new side windows, on the other hand, were different matter altogether. 
Um, they needed heating up and um, bending over a mould because they curve in several directions. Um, it curves in this direction, there's a curve, and there's an S-shaped curve here. It goes um, from convex to concave. And there's also a curve in this direction on the top as well. So that's quite a complex um, shape and uh, it had to be molded. And I did that in a domestic oven. Here again you see the, um, the new window frame. There's the fillet um, added to make the smooth transition from the door to the frame. So here's the, the, the door and there's the frame there. And of course you can't expect the rubber to, to go across that right angle. Um, so um, that wedge shape has been added to make a smooth transition. One thing I'm quite proud of is the way in which I've uh, integrated the fuel filler um, into the rear wing. I think that works quite well. Um, I spent a bit of time making this uh, from scratch in steel. Um, I wanted the shape to be uh, elegant. I didn't want it to be too big. It's a very small car. Um, so all the details on it really have to be as much in proportion as possible. Um, the steel on the rear wing, as I said before, comes up to about here and then um, from there on upwards it's the fiberglass moulding and it's bonded on round about here. Um, the interior uh, of the fuel filler, um, you can see the screw heads there. They um, uh, are there because that interior panelling, which is yet to be sealed up, is removable. But um, in operation and in, in looks, it, it pretty much looks as if it's production, which is kind of what I'm going for uh, with this prototype. This is one of the most um, interesting aspects of this build. It's a car for long distance travel. I wanted a really big luggage compartment. At the moment, it has no gas struts. Here's the interior um, of the hatchback. As you can see, it's got absolutely loads and loads of space. The hatchback lid itself is made of two mouldings, an inner and an outer, and it has a steel frame sandwiched between the two. The steel frame runs from the hinges. I've used the original hinges um, from the midget all the way through to the locking plate and underneath that metal cover um, there's room for uh, some lights so that the uh, boot area is lit um, in the dark. Here you can see the shape of the bodywork where the hatch closes down, again with the rubber seal all the way around. Now in behind here is the um, fuel filler that goes to the new fuel filler cap. And the battery has been relocated uh, underneath this panel work here. You have a lot of uninterrupted space. Now those loudspeakers um, uh, are situated there because there was really nowhere else I could put them. The magnets on the back are quite large, so they needed a decent amount of space. And there's room in, in between the two for a subwoofer uh, if need be. Now these panels all come out um, so you don't lose any of the boot space uh, underneath them. This is how it works. This one comes out 
and here you see there's a huge amount of space in the original boot. That's the cover for the new fuel filler pipe that disappears off uh, to the outside of the car. This panel comes out. This area is hinged so that uh, uh, becomes the, the side support for that panel. Now here we have the spare wheel which is a, um, a full-size spare wheel um, but it hasn't been widened um, so it's a four and a half inch standard wheel whereas the wheels I have fitted to the car have been banded as you can see so they've got an extra inch of width. Now, in this space, um, there will be um, a fitted suitcase, which will fit exactly into that area. So you won't lose um, any of that space at all in terms of uh, luggage carrying capacity. And now that fitted case could be used as a, um, fitted out as a toolbox or simply just as extra luggage space. There's a temporary strap around the spare wheel there and um, I've utilised um, an existing fixing for the fuel tank um, just to hold that strap. I'm actually going to um, um, offset that somewhat so that um, the strap falls nicely across the centre rather than just to the side of it. Um, it won't make any difference to the security of the wheel but it'll just look better. With the side panel removed, you can see there's plenty of space for um, the original battery that came with the car. Now, modern batteries uh, pack much more of a punch in a smaller space. So if a modern battery was put in place of this uh, old lead acid, then um, you'd have plenty of battery power and um, it's all tucked away neatly underneath the left-hand side rear wing. These uh, timber pieces that I've made will all be um, uh, covered and upholstered. Now here on the inside, hopefully, you can see some of the steel structures. It's a bit dark in here, but I'll be worth There we go. So that's the inside of the fiberglass there, which of course has got to be upholstered um, with roof lining and, and so on. Um, and along here you can see the steel rollover hoop and they're attached with tie wraps on, for, in a temporary way are the old reversing lights which are used as interior lights and the rollover protection goes all the way down inside of the B pillars there's a central T bar that goes across the windscreen frame, rear view mirror, and the seat belt mount attaches to the roll bar. This is a steel cover that I fabricated for the lock mechanism. Um, because the lock is set lower, I've had to modify it so that it still operates in the same way. The hook mechanism now sits much higher than the lock itself. Now here's a shot of the interior. Um, the dashboard has been changed around quite considerably. The paint finish on it isn't brilliant, um, but as I say, it's a prototype and uh, all of that will be rectified in uh, production models. Um, I've made a bespoke case for the radio, it's a retro radio, so it's a modern radio with a sort of retro look exterior. Uh, I made the case for that. Um, I also made the um, U-shaped cubbyhole above it. Like the rest of the car, the centre armrest will also be properly upholstered. Um, there's an ashtray there, there's um, also a um, cigarette lighter uh, and a switch for the interior lights. Mm. 
inside the armrest, um, there's yet another cigarette lighter. Um, and this is really um, in order to use as a charge socket for um, anything you might want to charge up, mobile phones or iPods or what have you. I've made a new wooden top for the dashboard. Um, uh, as midget owners will know, you can't get the padded rail um, off the car without first removing the dashboard. And so I wanted the um, padded rail and the top of the dashboard all to be in one piece. And that's just held on by some simple fixings you can get at very, very easily. And that'll all be um, padded and uh, covered. I wanted larger windscreen wipers, so I managed to find these slightly longer items, um, which is a modern wiper on the original um, stainless steel wiper arms. But in fact, the fit uh, where the arm goes into the wiper is not very good. So I might have to go back to the um, uh, old chrome wipers, but unfortunately the chrome ones are an inch shorter than the modern ones uh, and don't wipe the screen so effectively. The uh, screen washer jets um, are the original chrome items, um, but now there's an, ele an electric pump. And um, I'll show you the controls of that in a minute. At the front of the car, that's the original MG badge from the boot, now mounted at the front. At the moment, the main grill is simply painted black um, while the uh, grill for the oil cooler um, is, is painted silver. Now the, the finishes on those are, are pretty terrible. I put some paint on those very very roughly about five years ago um, and um, it's starting to look a bit tatty now so I'm gonna to have to think again about that. Um, oh that uh, shiny thing there behind the grill that's simply um, uh, an air inlet for the heater. Original mini style indicators, much nicer I think um, than the rectangular ones. Quarter bumpers will go um, either side of this slim bumper bar at the front that holds the number plate. This new nose section is all um, fabricated in metal. I've changed the dashboard around quite a lot. Um, I've added this pod area uh, to the right hand side of the dashboard um, to accommodate um, lighting. So there's a fog lamp there. Um, it's got a nice little illuminated um, uh, amber button and then it's a, a, a pull push. Ignition's off so it won't light up at the moment. Pull push. Um, here I've got the, the lights, so um, on a lovely old-fashioned rotary switch, so side lights uh, and headlights. The indicator stalk is, is the original one. The steering wheel at the moment is the original steering wheel, which um, I, I quite like. I don't like the centre. Um, not only is it a very poor fit and very wobbly, plastic on it. It's got that horrible 70s, 1970s feel to it. It's way too rigid and, um, and brittle. The actual steering wheel itself though I think is extremely nice um, but I might change the whole thing simply so I can get a, a decent boss and a nice um, uh, centre cap um, all at the same time. Um, besides which the steering wheel is, is, is beginning to uh, get quite worn in places. And it, I mean, it could do with replacement, even though I like it. I've changed the position of the dials. Um, in the centre, um, I've got the oil pressure and water temperature. Now, for owners of 1500 midgets, you'll know that's a very, very important dial. And it's absolutely centre stage. Uh, on the right of the speedo, on the left, the rev counter and then the fuel gauge um, here. I've left this area blank. 
the reason is, is that if customers wanted to have air conditioning, they'll need a place for the controls and the vents. If they don't want air conditioning, they might want perhaps um, a hidden sat nav. And there's room in there for to have a nice um, uh, metal flap, which could um, open and then the sat nav could, could, could come out automatically. Um, and I think that would be nice to have it so it could be hidden away. Um, here I've replaced all the plastic rocker switches with the earlier um, Lucas when necessary. You've got the screen, screen wash here on a momentary switch. Um, that's the original um, heater control. This is the wipers, um, two speed wipers as standard. And of course, uh, um, a starter button. Um, the radio, as I said, is a retro unit. So it has modern internals, um, an old fashioned exterior, and it works very well. Um, I did try it with an internal hidden aerial, but the reception was terrible, so I, I reverted to a standard aerial. Here we have the um, gear stick. The, the, the carpet um, uh, on the tunnel, it might be carpet, it might be quilted leather, I haven't quite decided yet, um, will come up to um, the base uh, of this little turret uh, that, that holds the, the rubber gaiter. It's a really nice looking rubber gaiter, um, so um, the carpet will, 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 won't cover it. I won't have a leather covering over the top. Um, I, I think this looks nicer. And I think that's about it at the moment.